we now invite you to listen to part four, the question and answer section of Supreme Master Ching Hai's enlightening lecture titled, Be a Touch Bearer for God, delivered on November 25th, 1999 in Johannesburg, South Africa. Jesus Christ fed 5,000 people with bread and fish. Fish is meat. Was that a sin? Jesus also helped fishermen get more fish. Was that a sin? No. The sin is, is we did not understand him. He did not eat fish. He did not feed fish either. We also eat fish every day, but it's vegetarian fish. We also call it fish. We call it hamburger. Sometimes we call veggie hamburger. Sometimes we're lazy, we call it hamburger. <laughs> we have things like chicken, we have things like steamed fish. All these are vegetarian. It tastes delicious. And if you are a non-vegetarian and the first time you taste them, it looks like a fish, it tastes like fish, you probably do not know. If we tell you that it's fish, you would believe it. If we tell you it's a hamburger, you would believe it. So. Jesus was a descendant of a, a clan that has been always vegetarian for thousands of years. If you want to do more research about uh, the Lord's life, you better take more time. And also he went to study in India for 13 years. That's the missing gap in the Bible that you couldn't explain. And if he studied in India, all the yogis there, the master eat vegetarian, how can he eat meat again? There's the two factors you have missed. Of course, the Bible cannot record everything for you. You have to do some research. Yeah, the church don't want you to be lazy and then put everything on the table. You have to <laughs> be creative and long for. If you long to know the life of Jesus, you have to research yourself, read more books and history and facts and more new findings and all that. Yeah? Anyhow, the fishermen's Jesus recruit. He did not tell them to fish again. He said, come, I teach you how to fish men. No? Yeah? He said, put down the net, I teach you how to fish men. Okay? But since they are fishermen, Jesus used the term as a fisherman sometimes to talk to them. She said, okay, today we catch a big fish. Means I have a good person to get initiated. We say the same thing sometimes. Also, <laughs> Why do I understand all this? Because I have direct teaching. If you want to understand, you also need the direct teaching. I told you I will show you how to get direct teaching from Jesus. Then you can argue with him, and he will tell you he doesn't eat fish. A poor master. Yeah, everybody tell him he did that, he did this. Uh, he tell you different, but you couldn't hear. So similarly, you remember how difficult it was for Jesus, how many people harass him? And, and, and persecute him and his disciples. So they have to talk in code, yeah? So today we have a big fishing time or something like that. Oh, let's go out fishing. Because if he really need fishing, he wouldn't tell his 12 disciples, say, come, forget it. I teach you how to fish men. Now you know, okay? Thanks. <laughs> The Lord did not eat anything that caused suffering to other beings. He would not. He was a very humble man. He was great in spirit, but very humble and self-denial outside. He did not need fish to keep him alive. There's so many things to eat in this planet to keep yourself alive. What is your opinion about the apostles? Where is heaven? Is it part of this universe? The apostles, they were Jesus' closest disciple to spread his message when he's not there. Give people initiation, explain how to meditate and all that. Yeah. And heaven is not a part of the universe. 
Heaven is our own creation, our own attitude. For example, when you're happy, you're in love, you feel you're in heaven. No matter where you are, you have a little hurt, you're happy. And when you're sad, when somebody threatens you, when you're under pressure, you live in a palace, you feel like hell. So <laughs> if we are in contact with God, every day we feel like heaven. That's why we say heaven can hear and now. Lo and behold, the kingdom of God is at hand. It's not far. Yeah. Dear Master, should we devote our lives to serving the poor or sick, or would we be interfering with their choice or karma? No, no, no. We should devote our life anytime we can and devote anything we can to help our brothers and sisters, be it spiritual or material. Yes, we are one. If he's hungry, you are hungry. If he's thirsty, it's like you're thirsty. It should be like that. It's not a must. It is a feeling inside. If, for example, if you see somebody hungry and thirsty and dying, and you feel very painful as if you yourself in that situation, then you help him. That is a measurement of your love, of your level of compassion. It's not a must. It's not a precept to follow. <laughs> it is a feeling in your heart. If you know you feel you should help that person, that means you have love in your heart and you should be happy. That's the only reward, that knowing that you have love and you should do it. Yes. No, thank you. I feel a lot of love, but trapped inside me. Can you help me spread it around the universe? You spread it. It's your love. <laughs> if you love, do something. If you love, just like if you love a boyfriend or girlfriend, tell her, tell him you love him, do something for him, give her flowers, hug, kiss, do whatever. So the same, if you love all human beings, then do something about it. Do something you think that would let people know that your love, uh, shower them with your love. Do it. You know what to do. You have God inside you. Hmm? Do it honestly with your feeling. Everyone do it differently. I cannot tell you what to do, okay? What happens to those who do not follow instructions and the scriptures of the Lord? What happened? They have to learn again the lesson of love. Maybe they have to learn it in a hard way, and that we call hell, yeah? He has to go through also suffering in order to understand that the suffering is no good, and that he not do it again. So in a way, he be in a hospital kind of way, so that he can heal the part that it was sick. Yeah? Anyone who inflicts suffering upon someone else, he's sick somewhere in his spiritual being. So after he get healed, he become whole again. Yeah? That's just the way people chose to live their life that leads to different consequences. That's why in the Bible it tells you, whatever you sow, so shall you reap. Judge not so that you will not be judged. If we don't want to reap the bad consequence of the future, then we have to sow good uh, seed right now. See? That's why the Bible uh, gives you guidance like, okay, shall not kill, shall not commit uh, lie, shall not steal, things like that. And make it uh, guidance uh, to our lives so that we uh, reap the better fruit for the future. If you have faith in God, why should we suffer and our prayers cannot be answered? Because you have to rise up to God consciousness to know this, yeah? and then you'll be content. Even when you come back to this physical life, after you have seen how much God loves us through the spiritual knowledge, you come back to this life, you don't complain no more. You know everything, why this happened, why that happened. Everything is for our best benefit. We'll be always grateful every day, okay? You have to know God first, yes. Yeah. How important is 10% of whatever you earn important to God? It is important because you love. It's your love. It's not the 10%. It's the love that goes with it. It's the love to share whatever you have with other people who are less fortunate. That's important. 
When one raises above the physical body, how would it be possible to differentiate true situation from e.g. hallucination? Yes, uh, there is a way to differentiate. I will teach you at the time of initiation. But only people who, who want to go deeply into the spiritual dimensions should learn much about all these things. So we have to show you the way to protect yourself. Yeah? But if you just meditate 10 minutes, 20 minutes, it's, it's okay. There's nothing to bother you. Hmm? You just relax, calm your mind, you do better business, sleep better, eat well. That's it. No God now and again. <laughs> There's no danger. Okay? Is it necessary to attend church every Sunday so as to be reminded, or one can still remember oneself by communicating with God by heart? By heart, yeah, if you can. If you can communicate with God by heart, you can pray in the closet, the way it is stated in the Bible, yeah? Uh, the church come after Jesus. The church is an organization that gather people who have faith in God and who want to pray together. It's similar to like our group, every Sunday we gather together in one place. It could be called a church too, but we call it a meditation center. And we meditate the whole day that day, just to remember God intensively, more than other days, because we are always busy every day. So that's the meaning of really going to the church every day, to get more communication deep communication with our true self, with God. And it's stronger when you meditate together. If you want to sleep, you see the neighbor is sitting straight, you feel ashamed, so you also sit straight. <laughs> That's the purpose. <laughs> and you help each other in uh, collective energy. But if you already know God, everywhere you sit is a church. <laughs> yeah? You should go to church every day inside, not just Sunday. <laughs> I want to know where is the true secret of God? And being a vegetarian, can I smoke marijuana? <laughs> <laughs> I know what you try to say, yeah. Anyhow, <laughs> where is the true secret of God? That you have to find out. I will show you how to find out, but you have to find yourself, yeah? I can't explain God in the physical terms. The more I explain, the more I mislead you. Yeah, I can show you God. That's all I can do. And uh, marijuana, as far as I'm concerned, is not really necessary for your vegetarian diet. <laughs> so do not include it in there. It's not a very conducive vegetable to your meditation, so please refrain from using it, all right? He also wants to know if he can eat marijuana then. <laughs> You're so hungry. My God, so much vegetable. You don't have enough? I advise you to eat tofu, okay? <laughs> yeah. You can fry spinach. It's better for you. <laughs> anything, anything that makes our consciousness uh, blurred and uh, not uh, clear, this is not a God way. God's way, no need physical aid, no need anything, because God is God. You can't change him, you can't make him come nearer, you can't bring him where you want just because of marijuana or anything else. You can only know God, that's it. And pure, simple, no God. Just concentrate, forget the world, and concentrate on God's side. Then you see God. I just show you how. That's it. There's no need for anything. And the vegetarian we eat, it's just because we just have to eat little of something to sustain this body. Anything we eat to sustain the body, enough nutrition, give our spirit a life, that's good enough already. Okay? We're not here to eat. <laughs> We're here to know God, all right? Question from the same person. Am I poor because of my thinking or my belief? We are poor because of our belief. 
but it's too late now, okay? Our planet has been led into believing that uh, we've been sinful and we've been punished for our sin and all that stuff, and so we should live a rich life here, but before this era, we have a golden era. Have you heard about it, right? In the golden age, right? Long ago, okay. In that age, people know God, believe in God, because they see God, they feel God's love. And at that time, there was no teaching such as a revenge for God, jealous God, or there's no such teaching as hell, because everywhere was heaven. But then some bad people has invented this kind of fear so could to control the population. And slowly, slowly, this fear creep into our consciousness. And we begin slowly to believe that we are sinful, we are bad. We couldn't know God because we are forsaken, we're born in sin, we always sin, and we, everything we do is sin. So our consciousness has become conditioned that way. That's why we also fail in our business. We became poor, we became deprived of many comforts, including material ones. But it's a little too late now to change drastically. The whole consciousness of the planet have been ingrained into this way of thinking. But it's not too late for you. If you're ready to change, change it today. Believe what I tell you and experience the love of God within you every day. Then you will see how your life changes. You will know God is really love and whatever you ask for is already there. Okay? <laughs> what is the difference between your way of meditation and talking or praying in tongues? Because it is said that talking in tongues is talking to God. How true is that? Both are true. Different levels of understanding about God. Yeah? Okay. In our ways, we don't talk even. We don't even talk with the mouth or the tongue. We don't use anything of the physical instrument. We go direct to heaven, enjoy the carefree life without this physical body. Yeah? And God doesn't speak to us in the human language. He does also sometimes. But we don't speak it out loud or we don't need to do anything. We just communicate. And we understand in a godly way, celestial way, which is a silent way. Dear Master, what are your hardships that you have experienced in your walks of life? Please share with me. Well, I do not consider really anything a hardship, even though in those moments, I do complain, or well, like all of us, I complain. I say, why? I don't like it. <laughs> but of course I know it is good for me, yeah? Any hardship would strengthen our spirit and determination to find God, to let us know that as long as we still cling to this physical, ephemeral existence, we always will encounter hardship. There's no hardship in heaven. So whenever we leave this body during meditation or deep contemplation, go to heaven, we experience all bliss and beauty. And then when we come back even to this physical body, still some blessing left over so that our life become even smoother and better. So even hardship is just a blessing in disguise. Yeah, no problem. I can write a book about hardship, but why? I'd rather write a book about the blessing that I enjoy. <laughs> Thank you.